Hello, welcome back to the next episode of the Tattoo Curry Geezer. So, very, very controversial. This is the sauce dash paste for a tikka masala. Okay, it's not tikka masala sauce. It's sauce dash paste for a chicken tikka masala. So, the chicken's marinating. Now, I cook to replicate the restaurants and takeaways that we all, my camera stand is falling over, that we all know and love. We're British, B-I-R, British Indian restaurant. Right, can I do it authentic? Yeah. Can I do it without base gravy? Yeah, but I'm not. I want it how the restaurants do it. That's what I got bought up on. So that's how I want to do it. That's the taste, the flavour, the texture, that everything that I want to get. Am I using Patax jars? Yes. You can't see it yet because this is the first process. Why? I'll tell you why. Because every restaurant, Bangladeshi, they, they all use Patax jars. Okay, so don't go through, oh, he's using a jar and turning off. No, if you want that flavour, that texture, that taste of a British Indian restaurant, tikka masala, this is how they do it. Okay, onion, green pepper, carrot, ginger garlic paste, salt, and then your pataks, then a few spices. Right, rant over. <laughs> Let's do this, geezers. Do it. So we're going to chop, I'm going to, use, I'm going to save half one of them onions because I'm going to do a thing in my bowl, pillow us tomorrow. So two and a half onions, one green pepper and one medium carrot, half a green pepper. I don't know why they use green though, see me, right, they use green. For me, the red, yellow, orange is sweet. The green is bleh, different, boring, bland. But this is the way they do it in the B-I-R restaurant. So this is what we are going right. Chop it up. Right. Oh, my eyes. Oh, I cannot cut onions. Oh, even just cutting them like that. Oh god, right, a little dash of salt. Um, what else do we need? Water. Okay, so it's normally about two pints of water. Can vary. So this is the first pint. There. And oh ginger garlic paste. Nothing's turned on yet, look. So, tablespoon and half ginger garlic paste, fresh, jarred, frozen, whatever. Doesn't matter, geezers. Um, right, I think that's about it, you know. I think. How's that looking? That's better. Right. Gas on. Hi. Just bring, is that my spoon? Yeah, just bring that up to temperature. Stir it. Yeah, once I know the water's up to temperature, which by the look of them bubbles it is, I'm going to turn the heat right down. That's like a two and a half, three out of ten. Okay, lid on. Even one that fits helps, but that, that will do. <laughs> oh, I've got so many pots, pans, lids. There probably is one that fits. Right, anyhow, so just leave that now. 10, 15 minutes. It needs to be soft. Soft, really soft because it's going through the blender. Or you can use one of them stick blenders. <laughs> oh, I just realized what I just did, it's so wrong, but so funny, oh well. 
yeah, if you think it's funny, you're still watching. Right, I'm off for a cup of tea. Right, I said about 12 minutes, so look at that, perfect. Oh, quicker than a wax. Yeah, just check it's not dried out. If it's dried out, you need more water, obviously. Perfect, so far. Still not soft enough. So, just having a quick stir and a check. Another 10 minutes, ish. Right, that's another 15 minutes. Yes. Oh yes, well, I'm not putting my arm over it this time. Nice. Mm, still do the bit longer actually. If you need to find a bit more water now, do it now. I mean, this is our, what, nearly half an hour already? It's what I'm saying, it needs to be soft. Oh, my belly's rumbling. I'm so hungry. We've got Storm Bertie down here at the moment in Torbay, Torquay, Torbay. Southwest Devon, and it is blowing a hoolie. And I worked last night, but I had a nice early finish. Yeah, I reckon I'm gonna give that a few more minutes. Oh, about another 10. Right, well, I'm gonna predict it's done. So I'm just gonna turn the gas off. I know it's done. Oh, right. Baby, still got another pint of water to go in. We've got all the powders almond powder, coconut powder. Talking of which, I need to find my scales. Oh, don't know where my scales are. That's going to be a lot of guesswork if I can't find my scales. <laughs> oh well, it is what it is. Yeah, that's perfect. That I knew it would be. Yeah, banging geezers. Right, now I'm going to let this cool down before I blend it. If you blend it now and burn yourself, seriously, don't come crying to me. Let it cool down. That is like molten lava. Look, look at the steam. It's too hot. You spill that on your skin, you'll go in hospital. So I'm going to give that as much time as needed to cool down. You take your chances. You carry on. But don't come crying to me. Right, I'm going to look for my scales and let that cool down for quite a while. With the lid on. Right, gas is off, totally off. Just put the lid back on to let it steam a bit more in its own temperature. Ah, right, oh, where are these bloody scales? Language, Timothy. Well, that's a bit of bonus. I've searched the kitchen for the scales, couldn't find them. Um... Just done the pastes ready. So that's two and a half tikka, two tandoori, one kashmiri. I've done the coconut powder and almond powder and sugar all by eye. Then I went and put the jars in the fridge. The fridge is in my spare room because my fridge is too big for my kitchen. I've gone in there and I found the bloody scales. Excuse my French. Don't know what the heck they were doing in there, but oh well. Anyhow, I found them, but I've, all, <laughs> I've already done it by eye. Right, time to get blending. Blender the blender, blender, blender. Right, you're gonna have to excuse the noise in the background. I'll put my washing machine on. Okie dokie, so step by step, don't burn yourself. Don't do too much at a time, no more than half a full. Health and safety tips with the tattoo curry geezer. Oh, you're gonna have to excuse my washing machine, it's going loopy. Right, all that's blended, and look. So I used an extra half pint of water. Now I'm gonna use the other half, like so, 
Actually, that's not quite half, but there we go. Right, we're getting there now, geezers. So, bring that back up to the temperature. Is that on? Can't bloody hear what this. Well, it's got two minutes left. I'm just going to disappear for two minutes. Oh, <laughs> oh thank God for that. Right. Where were we? Okay. Right. Whisk. I've measured this and I'm within 10%. So, you know, that's good enough for me. Sugar, almond powder, and coconut milk powder. Okay, coconut milk powder. There's quite a few brands. Maggie, M-A-G-G-I, is probably the easiest one to get hold of. So heat is on low, but we do need to mix this in. What I have done in the past when I've made this is actually put it back through the blender. Blender the blender. So just step by step, starting to take shape. Lovely stuff. Okay, step by step. Oh baby. Oh, I'm actually happy with that. I did sieve it before I put it in, so I don't need to put that back through the blender. Heat is still on a low. One out of ten. Right, the pastes, patak pastes. Two tablespoons or teaspoons, I can't remember now. Oh well. It's tandoori marinade, tikka marinade, spice paste, and cashmere. Now it's not oh, easy to get hold of this cashmere. Luckily, I found a jar that I've had for ages. I don't know what the date was like on it, but it's only a teaspoon, so sod it. I'm only kidding myself. Right, so that's in. If you can't get this cashmere paste, seriously, leave it out. I don't think it's going to hurt majorly. Right, quite thickening up now. I've still got probably half a pint of water to go in. Just get these mixed in. Yeah, about another half a pint of water, I think. Right, where's the glass? I've lost my glass. Oh, there it is. I've got it. Sorry, I've got it. Pan it over. Half a pint of water. That now is two pints. Just realised I haven't got me microphone clipped on. So the sound might have been rubbish or better. <laughs> Right, stir, 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 stir. Mix it in. Right, now, more controversy. <laughs> Colour. Oh no, you can't use that, it'll kill you. Everything will kill you, seriously. Stepping out in front of a lorry doing 56 mile an hour, or in my case 53 and a half, will kill you. Food colour dye, red. You can use a mixture, a combination of red and orange. But I'd use red. A little bit at a time. Mine is Prima Bright Red. I've had that tub, oh my God, since day one. What's that, four years? Four years now? Oh, there's a lot of whisking involved. If you do it left-handed, it'll feel like someone else is doing it. Unless you are left-handed, then do it right-handed. And it'll feel like someone else is doing it. Right, a bit more. Oh, You know, tikka masala, radiant bright red. Sugar. Lots and lots, it's sweet. It's not an healthy dish, geezers. You know, it's not a healthy dish. Right, I'm just going to keep stirring and adding until I get the required colour. Right, I reckon that's about it. <clears throat> now, I'm going to put in something 
So I forgot. But it ain't gonna hurt, I hope. I can't remember if I used it last time, but it's on my recipe, so I must have. Right. I did think I did. But it's on my recipe, so I'm gonna use it. On my recipe, I have got, which I've just noticed, a tablespoon and a half of mixed powder. Okay. I'm trying to wrap my brains around why I need it. Right, stir it in. Where's my whisk? Oh, my hand. Right. Yes, of course you need mixed powder. Then you don't use spices in when you're cooking it. You're using base gravy, which also has spices. So that's it. So when we come to make the chicken tikka masala, it's basically this base gravy sauce and chicken tikka and cream. That's it. Right. I'm just about to put that into a big container, put it in the fridge, let it set. That's it. It's done. I know it's been a long video, geezers, but hopefully you've stuck with me. If you're hearing me now, you obviously have. So yeah, that's going in a big bowl. Big bowl. And ready for when I cut my chicken tikka masala. I've gone all high. Right. I'm going to watch football now. Come on, Chelsea. Toe curry geezer. Out. <laughs>